Okay, so we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. And we have this function here, x over 3 squared plus y over 5 squared equals 1. Um, in order to talk about what implicit differentiation is, let's look at sort of a, a very basic um, dif differentiation problem that we've uh, done lots of times. Okay, y equals x squared. Okay, when we when we do this problem, we take the derivative when we when we are asked to find dy dx, which that's what we're sort of always asked to do: find dy dx. All right, that down a minute. Usually, we look at the right side, the x squared, and we just say, oh, we just take the derivative of x squared, which is what two x, right? But really, what we're doing is we're taking an equation and doing something to both sides. Um, we're taking the derivative of both sides. So what is the derivative of y? y prime. That's right. The derivative of y is y prime. Now, there's a reason we treat y and x different. It's because y is a function of x, and x is simply a variable. Okay. Um, and so the reason that we treat them differently is because we would have been asked to, to find dy dx, which tells us that we are looking for y as a function of x and the derivative of y. So when we do that with our big um, implicit function, our implicit relation over here, we shouldn't call it a function, um, our implicit relation, we do the same thing. We take the derivative of both sides, okay? Um, and so we'll start on the, on the left here, just go left to right, and it, the first step is pretty standard. Um, so the derivative of x over 3 quantity squared is a composite function, right? So what's the derivative of something squared? 2 times that thing, right? So 2, and then that becomes a 1, right? And on the inside, it stays the same, right? And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is, same thing happened over there, what is it? One third, yeah. Okay. Then we add the derivative of the next term, right? Uh, and we do the same thing because it's a composite function. So the two comes down, becomes a one, and the inside stays the same. Okay. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. This is where it gets a little trickier. What's the derivative of y over five? y prime over 5. That's right, yeah. And you can sort of think of it as 1 fifth times y, so the 1 fifth just stays because you always keep the constant. And then times the derivative of y, which is y prime. Okay, the derivative of y is y prime, the same as it was over here with the x squared. The derivative of y is y prime, right? Um, then we can put equals and, uh, and do the right side. Okay, and what is the derivative of 1, 0, okay? Um, this simplifies, um, so we, over here, we get 2x over 9, because uh, the 3's multiply, plus 2y over 25 equals 0, oh, times, and there's the y prime in there, right? Um, now, here's the thing. We would have been asked to find dy dx, right? So we want to solve for dy dx, which is written shorthand here as y prime. So we got to solve for y prime. So what do we do? Subtract the 2x over 9. So 2y over 25y prime equals negative 2x over 9. Then what? And how do we do that? Divide by 2y over 25 or multiply by 25 over 2y. So y prime equals um, 2x over 9 times 25 over 2y. The 2's cancel and you get 25x over 9y. Yes, thank you. It is negative. And just to clarify this, this is a separate problem. That was an example. So let's do another example of implicit differentiation. Shh. 
x squared plus y squared equals 25. This is a pretty standard form of a, for the equation for a circle, okay, with a radius of 5, the square root of the constant there. So let's um, take the derivative of this implicitly. So what do we do first? What's this derivative of x squared? 2x. What's the derivative of y squared? 2y, y prime, right? Everybody see that? We're doing the chain rule there, right? The outside function is the square. The 2 comes down, becomes a 1. The y stays inside, and the derivative of the inside is y prime, right? Okay? If you think about it, we do the same thing with the x, okay? The 2 comes down, becomes a 1. The x stays inside, and then we multiply by the derivative of x, which is 1. So it's the same thing. Okay. What's the derivative of 25? 0. Okay. Solve for y prime. What do we do first? Yeah. Negative 2x. And then y prime equals? Negative x over y, because the 2's cancel. Okay? And if you think about it, it's a circle on the origin. Uh, very s the slope really should be simple, because the slope is always tangent to the radius. Um, so if you think about this, it makes a lot of sense. If you're sort of a visual geometric thinker, that should be re really reasonable. Let's do a slightly trickier example. Let's do like... A 4y cubed plus 2y squared plus 2x equals x squared. Okay? What's the derivative of 4y cubed? 12y squared y prime. All right? The inside function, the derivative of the inside function always has to come out. Derivative of 2y squared? 4y, y prime, derivative of 2x, 2, derivative of x squared, 2x. Okay, what's the first step to solving this thing for y prime? Well, the first thing is just subtract 2, right? 12y squared, y prime, plus 4y, y prime, equals 2x minus 2, right? That's the first thing. But then what? Yes, take the y prime outside, right? We put the y prime right there. And then what? Right? What is that called? Factoring, yes. Factoring, very good. Okay. 2x minus 2. And then we divide by? Yeah, that big thing. 2x minus 2 over 12y squared plus 4y. Now, um, so that's the answer. That's the final answer. Okay, that's dy dx right there. Um, now, on some problems, like the, the one we started with, that originated from a... Uh, uh, um, parametric function, and it really, the easiest way to find the derivative was just to do the parametric chain rule, dy dt over dx dt, okay? But we took it a step further to, to show the possibilities. Um, functions like this, this last one we did, um, uh, there's no way to solve that. It didn't come from a parametric equation, so we, this is really the best way to do it, okay? Some functions... Um, if you were given an implicit relation, if you had, you know, y plus x equals 4, you shouldn't be differentiating that implicit. I mean, you could, but you may as well just subtract the x first and differentiate directly. So if it's easy to solve, just differentiate directly. If you have a parametric equation, try the parametric chain rule first. But sometimes you have to do implicit differentiation. Okay?